Right, okay. Like I said, th today's talk is a bit of a hodgepodge. We're doing all these different subjects, but now we're getting to some technical stuff now. Now we're um, uh, going to talk about deduction and in particular formal systems. So, like I say, universe of discourse for big mother's inner cognition is all of mathematics. So that's a little map of all of mathematics. Um, and all of mathematics can be reduced to mechanical symbol shuffling, believe it or not. It's incredibly tedious, but it can be. Um, and that's, you know, shuffling symbols according to mechanical rules. Um, now, a formal system of uh, symbol shuffling rules has three parts. There's the syntax, which is a set of strings of symbols. And they're also called woofs or well-formed well -formed formulae. I hope the rest of the world pronounces it woof because that's how I pronounce it. So there's syntax, there's also the semantics, which is you give each woof um, some meaning, a mathematical meaning. And then there are the proof rules, which are the ways in which these woofs can be shuffled. And we're going to look at a very simple formal system called MHW, Man Horse Wheel, uh, which is purely educational. Um, and remember I mentioned Hofstadter's Law? Okay, well that is um, from a guy, this guy called Douglas Hofstadter, who wrote this book, Gödel Escher Back. And in that book, he described this system called the MIU system. So MHW is basically the same as the MH, MIU system. I've just used different symbols, more fun symbols. Okay, so the first part, remember, is syntax. So the first thing we have to do is define an alphabet, which is the set of symbols um, from which the formulas are constructed. So here are some example alphabets. Now, this alphabet is an alphabet of symbols that American hobos use. They write these little chalk symbols to mean, oh yeah, you'll get a good meal here, or beware, they've got a bad dog, or whatever. So that's one particular alphabet. This is the ASCII table, I think. That's your computer uh, character set. Emojis, that's an alphabet. Uh, that's the Greek alphabet. Uh, those must be Egyptian hieroglyphs, I think. Yeah. And I don't know. Oh, it could also be Egyptian hieroglyphs. Of oh, course. It looks like uh, Hebrew. Hebrew. Yeah. What is it? Hebrew. Hebrew. Oh, okay. There you go. Um, so. I've chosen as MHW's alphabet the set of linear B ideograms. Okay, and now any culture that has symbols for footstool and bathtub are my kind of people. That's why I chose this. Um, and so that's the alphabet. Um, and a formula of MHW. And when we're when we're talking about uh, lots of different formal systems quite often we'll put the name of the formal system at the beginning. So MHW formula, etc. MHW Wolf, MHW theorem or whatever. So anyway, a formula is a possibly empty finite sequence of symbols, finite string of symbols taken from that alphabet. That's what a formula is. Okay? Just a long string of symbols, but always finite and always non-empty. Now a well-formed formula uh, for MHW is a non-empty finite sequence of the symbols man, horse, and wheel. Okay. Hence MHW. So here are some example woofs. I've made this really simple. Okay. Man, uh, horse, man, wheel, man. Man, horse, horse, man, horse, horse, wheel, horse, wheel, wheel. Okay, you get the idea. Um, so those are all woofs. You can see that they're a subset of the formulas because there are lots of symbols from the alphabet that we haven't used, uh, we're not allowed to use in a well-formed formula. Um, so, well, so there you go. So there's a set of all formulas and the woofs are a subset of a set of all formulas. 
So every woof is a formula, but only some formulas are woofs. Um, now the semantics, it doesn't have semantics, okay? It's, uh, so we can basically skip this section uh, for this particular formal system. Um, so uh, it means the symbols um, of MHW woofs are meaningless. And we could also say that they're uninterpreted and that will have some meaning later on. So when we're shuffling these woofs, we are shuffling meaningless symbols. Okay, it's just a symbol shuffling game and we can just switch our brains off and shuffle these symbols. Um, so now we're going to def describe the proof rules, the symbol shuffling rules for MHW. Now normally um, in any system like this, uh, the rules are presented like this. There, there's the, the name has uh, the rule has a name, obviously, and uh, you have a line drawn, and above the line there are zero or more premises and one conclusion underneath. And sometimes there's a side condition, okay. And what it means is, if the optional side condition is satisfied and you've already derived all of the premises, then you can derive the conclusion. Uh, now, MHW doesn't have. Uh, side conditions but later systems will so now a woof is a theorem this is a new term now if and only if it can be derived using the proof rules and a proof is a non-empty finite sequence of theorems each of which may be derived from theorems appearing earlier in the proof these are fundamental um, mathematical concepts um, theorem and proof and it's just symbol shuffling when you when you do it fully formally. It is nothing other than symbol shuffling. Um, okay. So the proof rules are here. Okay. So the first rule um, is an axiom. Basically, if uh, if a rule doesn't have any premises, so an empty top line, it's called an axiom. So. Rule zero basically says you can always drive the woof man horse. Okay. Rule one basically says now, if you see the top line, it says X horse, and the bottom line says X horse wheel. Now, the X here is what's called a syntactic variable, it's a placeholder for, in this case, any, um, any formula. So any any sequence uh, of uh, you know uh, man horse wheel. So if you have a, a it's basically a way of specifying patterns. So if you have a woof that ends with a horse, okay, respect of what the x is, if you have a woof that ends with a horse, then you can derive an identical woof with a, a wheel had it added on to the end. I'm going to give some examples of these. So. Um, Rule two, if you have a woof starting with a man followed by some string X, then you can drive the woof starting with a man uh, followed by two copies of X. Uh, rule, rule three, if you have a woof with three horses in the middle, then you can drive the woof obtained by replacing those three horses with wheel. Okay? And Rule four is if you have a woof that includes uh, a double wheel, then you can basically delete it. So you can drive the woof obtained by deleting the, the two wheels. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna give you some examples. Uh, what have I done? Ah, okay. Okay, here are some examples of each one. So uh, examples of each rule. So from nothing we can drive horse wheel. Do you see that? Yes? Uh, now, we've got now, in our collection of theorems, we've got the theorem horse wheel. So from horse wheel, using rule one, we can, def sorry, not horse wheel, sorry, man, man horse. From man horse, we can derive man horse wheel. Do you see that? Because we've instantiated X with man, okay? So the, the top line, is uh, man horse and the bottom line is man horse wheel 
So now we've got us theorems, man horse and man horse wheel. Now rule two, from man horse, we can derive man horse horse, because here we've instantiated the X it, it, it is a placeholder for the horse, so we can derive a theorem where, where we basically doubled that to horse horse. But then we can apply it again. So we can, uh, um, from man, horse, horse, we can derive man, horse, 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 horse. Okay? Okay, these are just examples of, uh, of pattern matching where we're, we're instantiating the X with a particular uh, pattern. So rule three, from man, and I think that's eight horses, we can drive man, horse, wheel, horse, 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 uh, using that rule. Because we've basically taken three of the horses in the middle of that string of eight horses and we've replaced it with a wheel. And again, we can do the same thing again. And we can drive, so from man, horse, wheel, horse, 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 we can drive man, horse, wheel, wheel, horse. This is a sentence I never thought I'd ever say. Um, and the final rule four from, uh, yeah, we, so we just derived man, horse, wheel, wheel, horse. And from man, horse, wheel, wheel, horse, using rule four, we can derive man, horse, horse. Do you get the idea? It's just mechanical symbol shuffling. There is no <laughs> real thought involved. We're just matching patterns of symbols and shuffle, match, matching, yes. How are the rules generated? Oh no, you can just make up whatever rules make you want. When you're, when you're designing a, a formal system, okay? I mean, you know, Douglas Hofstadter, he, made, he, he just made up this, this, um, this particular formal system as a way uh, for educational purposes, for, uh, for teaching the concepts of, of theorem and proof and things like that. Okay, now later, more sophisticated formal systems will have another purpose and we will design them in order to achieve that particular purpose. But right now we just, okay, we just, these are just simple symbol shuffling games. Okay, to just to demonstrate how, these are called inference rules, which just to demonstrate how inference rules, axioms and inference rules work. Okay, by shuffling symbols. And it's amazing, all of mathematics can be built on top of this. Okay, it's a different formal system, but you get the idea. So, uh, oh, what's this now? Um, okay, now because you, when you start off, you, you haven't had, you haven't, you haven't got any theorems yet. So when you're initially starting, the only way to start the process off is with the axiom, because that doesn't have any premises, okay? So <laughs> that's always, in any proof, that is always <laughs> gonna be the first rule, okay? Um, so the first theorem you generate will always be uh, man-horse, which starts with a man, okay? Now, if you look at all the rules, all the rules have the effect of preserving the initial man. Okay, I can go back and check later, but they do. Okay, so so if you combine those two facts, you know the first theorem you always generate is man horse, and every other rule after that will preserve the initial man. That means every theorem starts with a man. Every theorem starts with the man symbol. Okay. Um, now some woofs. For example, this is a woof, but not a theorem. So, so uh, horse, man, wheel, man is a woof, but it's obviously not a theorem because it doesn't start with man. And all the theorems that are generated by the rules guarantee that the theorem starts with man. So by seeing that horse, man, sorry, this is so hard to say, horse, man, wheel, man, doesn't start with man, we know that it's not a theorem. So therefore we know that there are at least some woofs that are not theorems and they're called non-theorems. And those, those non-theorems are unreachable by the proof rules, okay?
Um, so there you go. Um, the theorems is a subset of the set of woofs. So only some formulas are woofs and only some woofs are theorems. Only some woofs are reachable. So only, yeah, only some woofs are reachable by the proof rules. It's really hard to tell if I've made this too simple or too complicated. Um, so the set of all, if you imagine the set of all theorems, we can visualize them as a tree. It's actually an infinite tree. So if we start at the top by rule uh, zero, we get uh, man horse, and then we can split off. You know, if we go from there with rule one, we get one thing. If we go from there with rule two, we get another thing. And you can imagine uh, the set of all th uh, MHW theorems um, as a as an infinite tree. It's infinite; it goes on forever. Okay, the individual theorems are all finite in length, but there's an infinite number of them. Yeah. So for each theorem. If you look at the path from the root down to that theorem, that corresponds to its proof because it's basically the list of rules that you use to get to that um, theorem. Okay? And traditionally, when you write a proof out, you'll do it uh, as numbered steps and you will. Right, include the justification how you got there. So step one is always rule zero, which is the axiom and the theorem is man horse. Step two by rule two. Uh, step three from two by rule two. Uh, uh, and then step four, we got to that from step three by rule one, etc. Okay. And if you're doing, if you're doing it really, really formally, that's how you would write a proof out. Now the great thing about this level of formality is that it's completely unambiguous, okay? And actually in a future talk I'll, I'll describe how these systems came to be designed. Um, and it's because, you know, philosophers centuries ago were trying to reason about things in natural language and they, with common sense reasoning, and they would tie themselves up in knots. And, and never reach any conclusions. But this is completely unambiguous. If somebody says to you, this is a theorem, right? You can check, well, if, if they give you a proof, you can check their proof mechanically and determine if they've made a mistake or not um, when applying the rules, okay? Um, so the proofs can be checked completely mechanically if you don't believe uh, if you don't believe the, the, the final theorem. Right, now, th that, w that only works obviously if we're given a proof. But what if somebody instead gives us a target worth like man wheel, and they say to us, is it theorem or not? Okay, so in order to answer this question, we have to basically search the infinite tree of theorems for that um, pattern, uh, man wheel, and we don't know if it's there or not. So if it is there, it, uh, for this formal system, if it is there, in other words, if it is a theorem and we search the tree systematically, we are guaranteed to find it. We will eventually find it in a finite amount of time. If it isn't a theorem, in other words, it's not on the tree, then we'll, we'll just search forever and never find it. Obviously, we can't find it because it's not there, okay? So in this formal system, if something is a theorem, we can confirm that it is a theorem because we will eventually find a proof. But if it isn't a theorem, we, we won't be able to confirm either way because we, we, might, we might search the tree for a year and not find it, but who knows? If we kept going for another week, we might find it. So we can't tell. Just because it's taken us a year and we haven't found it, we still can't categorically say that it's not the theorem. Isn't that a limitation for AI? Uh, for AI, no. It's a it's a limitation of it, it, it. There are a number of limitations of formal systems. There are a number of limitations of logic, which is basically just part of the structure of of uh, mathematics. Uh, but is 
does that imply a limitation for AI? No, it doesn't. Because actually humans, um, for example, um, are subject to exactly the same con mathematical constraints, right? If something's, if something's um, uh, not a theorem, you won't be able to prove you won't be able to prove that it isn't a theorem by using these rules. You will be able to prove that it isn't a theorem using another mechanism, which we will talk about in a future talk, but so can the machine use that same mechanism. It's just much more complicated, okay? So basically there is no, um, it is a limitation of logic, but it doesn't, it doesn't constrain AI. Okay, any more than it constrains humans. So yeah, this, the process of searching a tree for a particular woof, a target woof, is called theorem proving. You know, we're trying to prove a theorem. And we can do it manually, which is really tedious, or we can try to write a computer program to at least help us. So uh, there are, you know, back in the 70s and 80s, there were programs which were called theorem proving assistance, which would help you in the process of doing a theorem, you know, they would keep track of everything. Um, and then more recently, from the 80s to basically now, there are uh, programs that are essentially fully automated, um, just because computers are so much faster now. Um, now, the, even a fully automated theorem prover won't, you know, if you give it a, th if you give it a woof that isn't a theorem, It'll still never find it, okay? Um, but they are capable enough to uh, find proofs in many, many cases. And the whole point, of course, is utility. It, you want utility, you want value. So it doesn't necessarily have to find a proof in every single case for, for there to be value, okay? Um, so, you know, maybe it can find in a reasonable time, it can find all proofs that are up to a million lines long, but it can't find proofs that are longer than that. Well, that has still got a lot of use in, um, in um, you know, in, in engineering. Um, so, we have introduced the following concepts. What an alphabet is, what formula, well-formed formula, proof, rule, axiom, uh, theorems, non-theorems, the concept of proof or derivation, the, uh, the process of generating theorems from the rules, the process of proving a theorem, the concept of a theorem prover, which is a, a program to actually automate that. And th these concepts recur in any logic that you look at. And that's obviously what we're gonna look at later on. We're gonna look at more sophisticated formal systems that are actually logics and that have uh, actual, um, um, you know, real utility. But it's much easier to start off with this little toy formal system to introduce these various things like symbol shuffling and things like that. Um, so there is homework <laughs> and the task is, can you prove man wheel? There's the rules. Uh, now this will be up, um, I'll put the video up so you'll be able to check, uh, you, you'll be able to see these rules. Um, and you know, the, t the goal is can you prove man wheel? Can you find a proof of man wheel using those uh, rules? Okay, so that's it uh, for today. Not bad timing, uh, quarter past eight, an hour and a, hour and a quarter. So, like I say, next time we're going to pick up from here and we're going to be looking at propositional logic, which is a, form, a different formal system, a little bit more complicated, more complicated rules, but we will actually be doing proper deduction. Remember, that's our first cognitive process. We will be doing deduction using a set of proof rules uh, called natural dedu deduction, actually. But it, it starts here. Okay, thank you for your attention. Oh, so any questions? Sorry, do you have a question? No? Okay. So, uh, thank you for your attention, and we'll see you all next month, <laughs> hopefully.